syncretic Sriya culture of the St. Thomas Christians before 1580, part two. The unique place of Sriya liturgy and music in the cultural history of India and early Christianity. From language, we now move on to the music tradition that the Kerala Christians developed over the centuries. We shall make an analytical study of a few musical samples from the liturgy. One chant from the Hudra, that is liturgy the hours, one chant from the prayers for festival occasions, and two chants from the Rasa, the most solemn form of Kurban. Sagdin and Ma, and the solution to the Christological controversies. This is the 18th stroke from the hymn, Briha Nana, Blessed is the Merciful One, from the night prayers for Sundays and ad, in Advent and Christmas. The hymn's authorship is attributed to Babai the Great, born in 1551 and died in circa 628. In just two words, the author puts to rest the Christological controversies that haunted the church, causing much pain and divisions. Now we will listen to Father Thomas Carlyle. So the story in, uh, in it is that uh, we, are, we are not historians, that is the first thing. Yes. Yes. That is very important. Yes. Sardin and Marlala Husa, Val Nash Husa La Pulaga. That means without any doubt, we uh, adore your divinity and humanity. Eh? And uh, uh, the nuances of the double meaning of the word the Lapu Laga and how does it affect the meaning of the text? Because the Lapu Laga also means without division, Pulaga. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then how will you how will you use that meaning of the Lapu Laga and translate the text? Uh, well, you see, uh, the Aramaic language has only few words. And therefore, you see, you have to explain the text in the context. And therefore, the Lapulaga here means without doubt, not without division. Well, you see, when you speak of uh, without doubt, uh, well, without division, that means uh, division of thought. Hmm. That means uh, without doubt. Oh, I see. Division I of see. thought. I see. And so, in other words, we have been singing the correct theology. Yeah, yeah. There was no controversy either. All the uh, Cancedonian and Ephesian controversies have been resolved in our yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. The earliest reference to this hymn in Kerala is in the acrostic hymn in Syriac, written by Father Chandi Kadavil, popularly known as Alexander the Indian, 1588 died in circa 1673. Father Kadabil wrote the acrostic hymn according to the meter and melody of Sagadin and Ma. The visual that we see on the screen is the first page, the title page of the hymn, and the word Sagadin, Sagadin and Ma is written in Surayak there. It means that the hymn was already famous among the St. Thomas Christians at the dawn of the 17th century. That is, before the Kunan Cross Oath in 1653 and the following divisions in the community. There is a play on the shades of meaning of the final phrase, La Pulaga. It can mean without doubt or without division. Professor Sakarias Tundi would translate this text by incorporating both shades of meaning. We praise you, Lord in your undivided humanity and divinity without doubt. The hymn resolves the long-standing Christological controversies that the Council of Ephesus and Council of Cancelon dealt with. The special significance of the East Syriac churches in India gave to this hymn is an indication that these churches were not subject to those controversies. The hymn is a perfect example of the interface of music, poetry, pedagogy, Dogma, theology, liturgy, and catechesis. The Hudra prescribes the couplet to be sung three times. At some point in history, definitely before the 17th century, the St. Thomas Christians in India treated this couplet as a separate song and created a new melody. Now we will listen to this melody sung by Father Thomas Carlyle. Sagdin and Marla la husa, Valna shusa de la pula gam. Sagdin and Marla la husa, Valna shusa de la pula gam. 
The first point to talk about is performance practice of Father Carlisle's version. The melody is sung three times in three ascending pitch registers, low, medium, and high. It is a way of drawing attention to the importance of a text or an event. We use this technique in social ceremonies like Madhuram Vekil during wedding receptions. Father Carlisle's version of the melody draws attention to the classification of Syriac melodies. The ascending cadence on the first phrase of Sagdin Mar is special. Sagdin and Mar, la la husa. So Sagdin and Mar. The ascending cadence makes the melody different from the melody of Maran Isho Malka Skida. In every other respect, Father Carlyle's version is the same as that of Maran Isho Malka Skida. So, that descending cadence. Instead, Father Carlyle's version shows ascending cadence. Thus, a simple cadence in one phrase can differentiate one melody from the other. This should be considered an example of the musical ingenuity of the Syriac composers. Bar Maria, Mariology in Music. This very popular chant is significant for its Christological and Mariological implications. The refrain in this chant is the key. Bar Maryam, Bar Maryam, Bar Alaha, the eldest Maryam. The child that Mary gave birth to is the son of God. In other words, Mary is the mother of the son of God. The anonymous author masterfully resolved the Christological controversies of the 5th century that gave rise to bitter divisions among the followers of the Christian faith. Not in India, though. What we see here is the text of Barmarian. The earliest available version of the text is from Paul Beljan's, the English title is Manual of Piety or Book of Meditations and Offices in the Chaldean Language. Second edition, printed in Paris, 1893. Pages 573 to 575. The chant appears under the title Sogi Sadi Alda, Dialogue Song for the Nativity. The Knanaya community sometimes claims this chant to be theirs. That claim is not tenable. <laughs> Malkyam Shiha Yildad Maryam Bar Maryam Bar Maryam Bar Alaha Yildad Maryam Ahit Ire Bar Maryam Kulas Yilde Bar Maryam Zammin Raya Vatal Sikte Malkyam Shiha Yildad Maryam Bar Maryam Bar Maryam Bar Maryam, Bar Maryam, Bar Alaha, Bar Maryam. Aw Isa, okay, Bar Maryam. Aghan we youthi, Bar Maryam. Qaddish Maya, Bar Maryam. Ma'amodithi, Bar Maryam. Shabda Ruha Bar Maryam Parakleta Bar Maryam The Syro Malabar Catholics sing this chant with a different melody. <laughs> The 
the melody as we know it is common to all the East Greek churches in Kerala. The melody is applied to other texts for different liturgical and non-liturgical texts. Let us watch a video. In first part of this video, we see George Tyler sings a song to the melody of Barumariyam. <laughs> In the second segment, we see a singer from Konduruti in Ernakulam singing a Syriac chant in honor of the patron saint of their parish, St. John Nepomsin. They created this chant, they wrote this chant, the text in Kerala, but in honor of St. John Nepomsin. And the melody is of Barmarian. <laughs> Okay, here is a pleasant surprise. The next segment shows a Tamil chant to the melody of Barmariya. By the way, this may be the oldest available Christian song in India. Now let us move on to Rasa, a liturgical revolution in Kerala. According to Father Varagis Pachukulangara CMI and Father Poli Maniyat, the Rasa in its present form in the Sura Malabar Church is a unique contribution of the St. Thomas Christians. However, the terminology, the characteristic chant genres, and the rituals associated with them were already in vogue in the East Greek churches. For example, the veneration of the cross, Onisa the Kanke, the Turgama, and the Onisa, the Evangelion, are all familiar to the East Syriac tradition. What is unique to the Sura Malabar tradition is the rite of prostration at the Bema, along with the invocation of the Holy Ruha. This particular rite deserves more attention. The placement of this rite, invocation of the Holy Ruha, after the dismissal of the catechumens and before the offertory is not worthy. The accompanying chant is in the form of a dialogue between the celebrant, the deacon, and the choir. Overall, assumes the nature of a mini musical drama. The Sura Malabar clergy took all these elements and created this design to expand the first part of the Qurbana and called it Rasa. That our forefathers were capable of creating it is remarkable. We do not see such an attempt anywhere else in the Catholic world. The Syriac clergy in Kerala had the knowledge base and the audacity to improve upon a received tradition. They were immensely proactive. We shall take a closer look at two unique chants in Rasa. Sliva the Hualan, for the veneration of the cross. Here is the version of the Siramal tradition. <laughs> Now let us listen to two of the several melodies of the same text from the Chaldean Syrian Church of the East. 
the singers are Rekha and Agna Wilson in the show. The cross became an object of worship and a work of art to behold and meditate. At this point, we may revisit the video we watched earlier from Aramaic Project 115. Here we witness an unusual phenomenon, the addition of a preamble to the text to accompany the sign of the cross with minor doxology. The preamble says, by the sign of the Holy Cross, deliver us from our enemies, O our God, and then the minor doxology. We may assume that what we saw in the video is the remnant of a practice among the Syriac Christians for centuries. What follows are a few musical observations on the accompanying chant for the veneration of the cross from the Sura Malabar tradition. There are five stanzas in the chant with five different incipits. It seems the focus of the composer of the melody was more on the theological content of the text than on the words and the syntax. The song's theme is the cross, but the mood of the melody is triumphant. The consistent use of the ascending leap of a perfect form from Sa to Ma, Sa Ri Ga Ma, on the opening word of all the verses sets the mood of the song. Vehu Nehde Sleva Kuma and so on. It is almost like a word painting of the act of raising the Sleva high above the heads as a sign of victory. The melody exemplifies the Pauline theology of the cross in Galatians 6.14. But may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mark the word boast. It seems the word boast inspired the composer of the melody in setting the mood. The melody alludes to resurrection rather than crucifixion. Use of meaningless syllables in Syriac chants, a unique phenomenon, another example of a syncretic style. We shall listen to the Turgama in Rasa, or the Sdhamman. This is a Turgama interpretative song that is intended to prepare the congregation to listen to the day's reading from the epistle. There is an addition of a two-syllable vocable inya, a nonsense syllable, at the end of each verse to complete the melodic phrase. Let us listen to track number 11 from the CD Kambil Marun. Pudestamaniya Bramsaramba Lahalahaye Inga The Vestos Malka Dasmayane Udaraye The printed version does not include the vocable. The singers add this for a comfortable cadence in the melodic phrase. The practice of adding nonsense syllables is an acceptable practice in Malayalam poetry and the performance practice of folk songs in Malayalam. Example, There's a caveat here. The sample we used for this discussion is from the CD Kambil Mara. The participants in this recording were all CMI priests. Therefore, the question remained if this phenomenon of adding nonsense syllable to Syriac poetic text was part of the performance practice of prevalent among the singers of the CMI congregation. The answer is in the next video. Let us watch. <laughs> 
Many years ago, in 1999, I recorded the same chant at St. Joseph's Monastery in Manaram for a CD. Now it is in a CD called Kambel Maram. Interestingly, this particular chant, there was an inya, inya. added to yes, yes. You know about yes, it. I, I can sing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> You see dots, ah. instant <laughs> dots. So you yeah, filled in, feel that, feel you feel in that gap yeah. with inga inga. inga. Now, interestingly, you sang inga twice. Huh. Yeah, what we have in the CD is oh, the man inga. <laughs> Just <laughs> one inga. Ah, that's what uh, the, the old priest uh, we used to sing like that inga inga. <laughs> ah. I had an angle like that who was singing always like this. Oh, okay. from him I learned. This. So you're familiar with that. This is Father Matthew Matam from Changanashiri. Father Matam pointed out a curious piece of information. The printed text includes a few dots indicating a melodic space for the singers to fill in with inga. It means the practice of singing was in place many years before printing the missal. In any case, what is significant here is that our forefathers were comfortable in combining the sacred with the secular. They could combine liturgical singing with aesthetic enjoyment. Possibility of a music theory of Syriac chants in Kerala. The East Syriac liturgy contains an extensive repertory of chants and of various kinds. The diversity of poetic genres, styles of melodies, scales, compositional techniques, performance practice, and the application of a unique concept of rhythm deserve musicological attention. Such a study may pave the way for a music theory of East Syriac chants in Kerala. For convenience, we shall take an analytical look at a few samples from the current chant repertory of the Siramalabar Church. This may be the beginning of a new approach to the study of Christian music and may highlight the possibility of a Christian musicology in India. Before proceeding further, we may consider that the North Indian Hindustani classical music and the Syriac chants have a shared history. Both are the products of intercultural communications between India and West Asia. The Syriac language and chants originated in West Asia, but found a life of their own in India. Besides the factors related to the pronunciation of certain syllables and general vocal inflections, the same chant texts are sung with different melodies in the Middle East and India. So, so much so that we can treat the Syriac musical repertory in Kerala as a separate entity. For a sample study, we shall revisit the chant from Rasa that we discussed earlier, Sliwa Dahuwal. The anonymous composer designed a memorable melody for the text. The melody consists of a hexatonic scale, six notes, Sa, Ga, Ma, Pa, Tha, Ni. Ni is minor, flat. However, the melody revolves around a major tetrachord with a Ma as the tonic. Sa, Ma, Sliwa. The Sa is used only as an approach note to tonic Ma. That is, the melody revolves around this note. The melody is unique for two reasons. First, the incipit and the four verses in the stroke begin with a leap of a perfect fold from Sa to Ma on the opening words. Wehu, Wehu, Sliwa, Wehu, Humar. Venas, starting a melody by a leap of a perfect fall in all the verses of the stroke is unusual in the Syriac music repertory and in Indian classical music traditions. Second, the composer of the melody employs a unique compositional technique. 
The melody of the first three verses ends on Pa, one note above Ma. Only the cadence of the ultimate phrase, or the final verse, the melody comes back to Ma. So the final phrase, come back to Ma. This is to create a sense of incompleteness. It keeps the singer and the listener in suspense and a sense of curiosity to hear what comes next. Finally, the melody resolves on the, to the tonic ma at the end of the final verse. <laughs> the other phrase is then ma all the other verses end on na pa and only in the end the composer of the melody ingeniously employed a technique that people use during daily conversations and writers use in persuasive speech. For example, the rise and fall of the voice in the adage Malayalam, Here, the first two phrases, Tinna, Kadich, and on a relatively higher pitch. And the final phrase, Murumurupa, cadences on a lower pitch by almost three notes, indicating the conclusion of an idea. So this is the technique that the composer of Vehu Negri used. Now let us move on to another unique concept of rhythm in Syriac chants. The unique application of rhythm in Syriac chants defies our common understanding of rhythm. In the Syriac chant repertory, there are four kinds of rhythm. First, chants that are set to a metronomic rhythm in which the melody flows to a regular beat. Example, Regular, metronomic rhythm. Second, Chants that follow logogenic rhythm. That is, the flow of the melody is based on the length of the syllables with pauses at the end of phrases or verses. For example, Third, chants that begin with syllabic rhythm and end up with a melisma. So there's a melisma, meaning a chant without text. At the end of the last, last syllable of the phrase, Puslim Eta Pusle Baslama. From there, uh, an ornamentation in a melismatic way. Kambel uh, Mara. So that Ra An is embellished with an ornamentation. Kurbana. That is melisma. So until then, you follow the rhythm of the syllabic, the syllabic rhythm, the logogenic rhythm, meaning rhythm that is implied in the text, and then give a melismatic ornamentation. Four, chants that are set to regular metronomic rhythm, but add pauses at the end of, a sem of semantic units. Let us see a sample from in the voice of our Abel Peri from CMI. Our Abel is singing the famous chant, Tu Yai Badmus Heshoga. Tu Yai Badmus Heshoga, Prisa Vasal Beriyasa, Madina Hanu Hare Damisiha, Vakna Halma Buyana. I prefer to call this semantic rhythm. That means you start with a metronomic rhythm and when points of interest come, semantic units end, you give a pause for reflection and meditation. I'm glad that we have the singing voice of Father Abel in our digital library. Surprisingly, chants in the first category that are set to metronomic rhythm are comparatively rare. More interestingly, 
the Syriac chants that are set to poetic meters that imply the flow of syllables according to a predetermined pattern. For example, Maslow's Kene the Sparlag, Tuyai Badamus Heshoga. So, Maslow's Kene for the Sparlag, three, four plus three. Tu yai bad mus for hesho ka, four plus three, seven. So seven syllables. The seven sin- syllables imply seven beats that could simulate a seven eight rhythm. Thinna, thinna, thin, thinna. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. This will be rubak thalam in Hindustani music. Thinna, thinna, thin, thinna. However, the rhythm in the melodic realization of these two chants are completely different. The slow scanning, the spalla, see the flow. And then, tu yai badmus heshoga, prisa vasal bariyasa. There's a pause there. It's a completely different approach. That's the ingenuity of the Surya composers. A reasonable question that arises in our minds is that what happens to prose texts that are not set to specific meters? Our forefathers found an ingenious way to address that issue. They came out with a concept of kyanaya. The Syriac word means natural. That is a melody that comes naturally to the singer. Let me give you an example. Barikma. It goes with the Sudhi of the Tantra. By the way, this Tantra is tuned to Madhyam, the first string is tuned to Madhyam, Ma, the fourth degree, instead of Pa. And many of the Sriyak chants uh, belong to that particular tetrachord. Sarigama, Barikma, 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 Karwala. Maran wala hum rahmanu zad daibu sa sedra se Use of Syriac mode in secular songs, Margangali. The use of certain melodic modes in both liturgical and non-liturgical contexts merits attention. Let us watch a video. This is, the teacher in the video is none other than the great Thoman Lukasha, an exponent of Margangali, the dance form. For example, the Vandanaganam in Margangali and several Sri songs, Barmariam, Maikaninda, even Barikmar, which I sang just now, share the same melodic mode of a minor tetrachord. We do not know who borrowed from whom. Did the composer of the Sri melody adapt the local mode? Or is it the other way around? We do not know that yet. Before concluding this part, I would like to talk about that particular aspect of using Madhim, the, the minor chord, ending with only four notes. Sarigama garigarisa as a compositional device. Uh, in Indian classical tradition, there is a concept of Madhima Sudhiraga, meaning ragas that have focus on the Madhim, the Ma, the fourth degree. Usually, the Sa and Pa, tonic and the fifth, are the most important notes. And the Tampuru is tuned to Sa and Pa. But in this case, in the Madhima Sudhiraga, the first string is tuned to Madhim. Ma. Like this. Sarigama. Ma. 
So there's something in common between this style in Srik with the Madhima Sudhi Ragas in Indian, both Hindustani and Carnatic classical traditions. Conclusion of part two. The St. Thomas Christians in Kerala celebrated their faith through songs. They inherited many of those songs from the East Sikh liturgical tradition. After living and breathing the language and theology for centuries, they found ingenious ways to enhance the meaning of the text. In the process, they happened to create new melodies with a musical grammar and syntax that is different from what we encounter in the established classical music traditions in India or elsewhere in the world. Based on those factors, the Syriac chant repertory deserves attention as a third system of music in India after Karnataka and Hindustani systems of classical music. The variety of composition techniques and the unique rhythmic ideas should find a place in music textbooks in the academia, especially in Kerala.